we're going to close out today, guys, talking about mortgage rates because for the fourth, fourth week in a row, uh, they have uh, they have increased. Now, yeah. borrowing costs are hurting people, but you guys, and I see this here at the office, you guys continue happening, having new files opening, and you're opening more escrows now in April than you were back in March and in February. So yeah. rates have been on the climb. At the same time, the buyers have become more hungry. What the heck's going on? Uh, again, I think it's fear of messing out. I think yeah. is you know the new standard, the new understanding, the new information that's coming. Uh-huh. That now they're saying like, okay, I already know what's going to happen. This is a this is a peaks and valley situation. You know, right now interest rates are at its peak, but they're going to go down. What goes up must come down. Yeah. Right. And so I just think that they understanding that information and just saying. I get it, especially when you're with the right person and we can break everything down, right? Yeah. Like on the ones that we uh, that were um, got approved, she wanted to go with twenty uh, percent down on an eight hundred and fifty thousand dollar purchase. Mm-hmm. But I broke all the numbers and I went FHA three mm-hmm. and a half percent down, right? Mm-hmm. It was a difference of a thousand dollars a payment. Oh, a month. A month. Wow. Mm-hmm. Between conventional putting twenty percent down, which was like a hundred some thousand That's dollars, one hundred and seventy thousand dollars, right? So versus a three and a half percent, which is like twenty eight thousand yeah, something like that. Yeah, twenty seven five something like that. You 20, know, twenty six. And five, so what? What I suggested like is I said get out of that one seventy that you are already gonna put down. Put twenty four thousand dollars aside. Mm-hmm. Pretend like your payment. Yeah, it's mm. somebody else is gonna make it. Put that money aside. In hopefully less than two years, we'll refinance. We're going to lower that and then switch it to conventional from FHA, right? Leverage that money and then utilize the other funds to do the remodel and everything that you were going to finance before. Yeah. I want to make sure this is really clear to everybody watching. So what Memo's talking about is if her payment is going to go up by $1,000 a month by going to FHA because she's putting less money down and she has an FHA loan with mortgage insurance, you might be offsetting the the mortgage insurance part if you put 20% down, but she's coughing up about seventy grand. Okay? Correct. Now, by doing so, her monthly payment is $1,000 more per month. So for two years, $1,000 more Every month is twenty four thousand yes. dollars. So effectively, she's stashing those acorns so that her net impact to her own budget isn't negatively impacted by her spending that thousand dollars extra when she's already put it aside. Correct. So by doing so, she's buying herself forty. 20, 24 months of time in order to refinance. And if properties still go up over that over time a little bit, maybe she can get out of the, um, the, the mortgage insurance. Maybe she can get out of FHA, get into conventional and have a better loan to value ratio. And then her monthly payment will be more settled. Correct. And now you don't have to go finance the other repairs like your windows, the flooring and all that stuff costs money. And we already know when we borrow money, like at a, uh, from Home Depot, what have you, the interest rate's like 24, 32%. Yeah. Super high. Yeah. Right. So now you're using the same money that you were already considering to put into your mortgage. Why not keep that and go into this property, fix it up, and go into it like, whoa, this is a good move on my behalf. And it, mean, and it maintains liquidity, which is, I think is a really important part. You're talking about the, the, the part of it like where, okay, well, my borrowing cost to, versus, to myself is less than it is borrowing at Home Depot or my credit card at 30% or whatever. Um, but it, your 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 liquidity is a big deal, uh, especially if your monthly payment is going to be $1,000 more. You're already, already saying she's going to have a set aside for that. But even if there's unexpected expenses that come up that are not planned yeah. in the budget, if you will, over that same 24 months, yeah. well, then at least you have the cash already in your hand. And maybe it's in a, a savings account or a CD or something that's making you some good return. Put some of that money somewhere bearing interest. That'd be helpful, too. Yeah. But that liquidity is a huge part, I think, in a plan like this. Yeah. You know, not everybody. I mean, we got to consider also not <clears throat> a lot of people have that much money saved up, right? And mm-hmm. in this case, she has 200 some thousand dollars to do whatever she needs. It, it just makes more sense. You know, I got a text from her yesterday. and She was like, Will, what would I have done without you? Like, mm. you just made my day, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. Like, I want to put myself in those shoes. What would I do if I was in that situation? You know, and how do I leverage and maximize what I do have? Because yeah. if I have two hundred and some thousand, I go in this, and it let's just say it costs me thirty thousand to fix up. I could still earn right now. I mean, I talked to my financial advisor last year was a great year. I earned nineteen point six percent return on the investment. Yeah. She may be just doing the right thing too. And, and look, I don't, I'm not going to beat around the bush and make people guess what he's talking about. But here's the deal, and we've seen this from our decades combined of lending. Once you put the money in the house, it's really hard to get it back out. Correct. Now we talk, oh, it's easy to do a home equity line of credit. Not when no. your LTV is high. That is not the true. Not not the case. So this advanced strategy he's talking about is to is to kind of like overcome that hurdle that once you put the money in the house. It's really hard to get yeah. out because there's not a lot of people that are going to be looking at you to refinance an eight hundred fifty thousand dollar house at ninety percent LTV in this yeah. market. But when you're buying that house, they're 
they're your brand new money. You're not replacement money to them on the backside of the deal. Your new money, that's new money out, bearing new interest back to them. They're interested in that part. Yeah. So don't let that go by. Yeah. So <clears throat> I think uh, one of the reasons, Lee, for me that I feel that I see the switch up in, uh, in demand, even with the rates going higher, is because I feel in 2022, everybody was kind of lost and didn't know what the heck was happening because they had just come off low rates, cheap money. So the hangover was really hitting at the height of it, right? So. Yeah. 2023 people started kind of like okay drinking their electrolytes kind of got a little bit more you know up and going and they're kind of understanding what was happening but still like why is this happening 2024 you're like okay i see what's happening i already understand more or less what are the solutions can i make that solution happen okay great let's move forward and now it's more or less about you know the rate the price it's about well my situation and yeah. i think that's what people are now cornering it down to that it doesn't matter the price because prices are going to go high doesn't matter the rates they go up and down my situation is what doesn't change unless i make the decision yeah. so what do i need to do right now and this is where i'm seeing right now where people are looking for solutions they're done reading the headlines they're done reading the negativity like how do i yeah. get out of this or well, what's the actual step like what can i do to better my situation and um, one of the things that you said that was super surprising last week when we talked about our article that people were doing uh, their remodels on cash reserves over their equity. And the example you just gave is just like, yo, like you yeah. paid more over there because you think the cash, oh, it's cash, it's free, but you're not really looking at it that the investment over here is leverage. Yeah. And you're still using the same <laughs> money, but now you're putting your money at risk. Yeah. No. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think that this is going to be the story for several months, guys. Um, obviously, mortgage rates are not going the way everyone was predicting. And we've already talked about why it's so hard to predict. And there's a lot of variables of why it is difficult to identify where rates are going next and why. Uh, well, I said that twice, but yeah. uh, it's hard to know where they're going. Um, but for those who are willing to take the risk and to venture into homeownership, um, you know, it's Always supposed to be a right time to buy. <laughs> That's what the Bevel and the Mark says. It's never never the wrong time, always the right time, but it really does come down to you. It really comes down to your circumstances. Yeah. And so when you're talking to Will, you're talking to Brian, you know, their job, our job yeah. is to let you guys know you should do this or maybe you shouldn't. And I'm, sometimes you shouldn't is the right answer. Yeah. I mean, the best, <laughs> the big example I can use is like wanting to take that vacation. I was saying, I want to take a vacation. No, just freaking book that vacation, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to wait to have a kid. No, just have the kid. There's never such a thing of being in the right time at the right moment, That's right? True. Like, I, yeah, I, I yeah. mean, I had two back. I, I wish I had them all planned out. You know what I mean? But it wasn't like sometimes it just didn't work like that. Yeah. And the homes, it wasn't like it was planned out. It was just one of those days like, mm -hmm. hey, Tanya, I think we need another house. You know, I think there's, we just need bigger space or I like the school district over there. Let's just go and do yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and then once you get that first one, it always seems like the second, the third, the fourth just become mm -hmm. easier. Yeah. And now you just understand it. It was just like yesterday I told you, I went with the investors, right? Here I am. Oh, I got two projects. I got an ADU. I'm building the garage into this and the other one, you know, I'm, we're going to do like four or five units in the back in the Imperial Beach one. And so I look at these guys and he's saying, I want to build 5,000 homes. I'm like... <laughs> yeah. And then I look at the projects in less than six weeks are almost freaking the, the, the framing's right. almost all done. I'm like, man, I am so just taking a long time overthinking it. You know, and it's all in the action. We just gotta create that action. Yeah. yeah. We gotta use the resources. You guys know I'm one of those. I write my goal and my two affirmations. And one of my my affirmations was I will learn to utilize my resources yeah. and not give a shit if I think I'm inconveniencing yeah. them. Yeah. Because we always think we're inconveniencing people. But no, if you don't ask, you're inconveniencing yeah. yourself. Yeah. Well, um, I appreciate you saying that. I mean, <clears throat> it is important, right? especially right now, You know, it's really important to rely on people who are doing the things that you are aspiring to do to talk to. No. Ask the right questions, get the information you're looking to have so you can make the best qualified decision for yourself. 